remember, the ridges and hollers around Deep Gap, North Carolina have resonated with the powerful guitar and banjo picking of the Watson family. To many, Doc Watson and his son Merle became the personification of traditional Appalachian mountain music. Although Merle Watson's life ended tragically and far too soon, his memory and his music live on. Each spring, the best pickers, singers, fiddlers, and fans make a pilgrimage to a special garden in the mountains of North Carolina to help Doc and Rosalie Watson remember their son Merle by celebrating the music he loved. The Merle Watson Memorial Festival. It's a remembrance. It's a celebration. It's a homecoming. It's Doc Watson and friends picking for Merle.
In the deep rolling hills of old Virginia There's a place I love so well Where I spent many days of my childhood In a cabin where we love to dwell Why he does will mourn and sorrow The wills will hang their head I live my life in sorrow Introduce the newest member of the Tony Rice unit, although part time, is uh, my friend of many years, uh, Mr. Peter Rowan. Here's the Sally Gooden.
One of the most colorful characters where I grew up was a fellow named Edgar Burrison. Edgar was the poor but proud owner of the car wash where I grew up. This is because he happened to own a sponge and a hose. He was so poor he could only afford to eat twice a day. He'd have a big breakfast in the morning, then he'd go off to work. And when he got back home in the evening, he'd have supper before he went to bed. But what Edgar did for lunch every day was just go down to the corner bakery and he'd sit down on the curb out in front of the baker's shop and just, ah, smell those sweet aromas wafting out the baker's window. Now the baker, a cruel and stingy man who will remain anonymous in this anecdote, got tired of Edgar doing this every day at lunch and one afternoon he went charging out the front door. He thrust a bill into Edgar's hand. He said, Edgar, I'm getting sick and tired of you sitting out in front of a bakery every day smelling all this good food and never buying anything. From now on, I'm gonna have to start charging you for the smell. Edgar, poor but proud, accepted the bill, walked the three blocks back to his car wash, tore the coin changer off the wall, emptied all those coins into a cigar box, and with the cigar box full of coins under his arm, he walked the three blocks back to the baker's shop. He walked right through the front door, right over to the cash register where the baker was standing. He held that box of coins out under the baker's ear, and he began to shake it vigorously. The baker said, Edgar, what in the world are you doing? Edgar said, Mr. Baker, I'm just paying you for the smell of your food with the sound of my money. Yes, I admired Edgar Burris. <laughs> he was the first philosopher I ever knew. We were walking down the street one afternoon. Suddenly, he turns to me and he says, Michael, I have seen you walking around town for the last few weeks with a handsome young woman on your arm. I wonder, 
are you two going to bind yourselves in holy wedlock? I said, well, Edgar, we wish that we could, but we've discovered some family similarities which we cannot resolve. He said, what do you mean? I said, well, let me explain it to you like this. You see, Elma Turrell is a beautiful girl, and I'd love to have her for my wife. And she's just the kind of a woman who could make me happy for the rest of my life. But my daddy said, son, there's something you don't know, and it's something I think you ought to. Elma Turrell is a beautiful girl, but son, she's my daughter. Well, Alice Green is a beautiful thing. I'd love to have her for my wife. She's just the kind of a woman who could make me happy for the rest of my life. But my daddy said, son, there's something you don't know, and it's something I think you ought to. Alice Green is a beautiful thing, but son, she's my daughter. <laughs> no laziness in the cross family. <laughs> well, I've been all around the whole darn county like a buck hunting for a doe. But it seems every girl I'd like to marry is a wild old daddy's soul. So I went to my mama with my head hung down. She asked me what the matter could be. I told her my problem and she took my hand and said, son, now listen to me. See, your daddy was such a good-looking young man and like an eager young stallion horse. His blood ran hot, so you can't blame him for letting Mother Nature take her course. But you got no reason to be upset. Don't you worry, don't fret, don't bother. You see, your daddy ain't your daddy, though he thinks he is, so you can marry whoever you want her. Rip it, rip, rip, rip it, bow, bow. Ladies and gentlemen, the song will be about a man called Old Man Lathers. Old Man Lathers was a bad, evil man. And we're going to tell you what happened to him in this next song. Well, Old Man Lathers well, shot down a man in Georgia. Get on down here. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Let's yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, Old Man Lathers well, shot down a man He just walked away, boy. Oh, Lord. Lord, Lord, he walked away. The judge told the high sheriff, oh, oh, Lord, go and bring me ladder. Oh, the judge told the high Sure. Oh, Lordy, go and bring me that Come on, hang on. Bring me alive, boy. Oh, Lordy, Lord, 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 get alive. Come on, make a payday. Make a payday, man. Let's go now. Come on now. They found old lathers. Oh, Lordy, wait. Yeah, they yeah, found yeah. old ladder Oh, Lordy Way down between two mountains Come on, Molly, turn the green now, turn the green now, go on And they shot him down, boy Oh, Lordy, Lord, Lord They shot him down Come on, let's get him up now, let's get him up now And they laid him down, boy I've always listened to all kinds of music. I might have been passionately involved in bluegrass, but I was listening to Indian music and jazz, and and uh, I'm just a music lover, you know, classical music. I, I sort of agree with Duke Ellington. There are only two kinds of music, good and bad. And uh, I haven't really seen any boundaries uh, to what I do. Uh, I mean, I'll make the boundaries.
Yeah. We'd like to play uh, some music that was written by one of my favorite mandolin players, a guy that comes from Brazil, where he lived and started a style of music, sort of like, sort of like bluegrass. It's called Choro music. And I just put out an album of this guy's music. His name is Jaco do Bandolin. I call him the Bill Monroe of Brazil. This is one of his tunes, Asanqueado. Thank you very much. I'd like to introduce the boys in the band. 
to you all. They all come from the state of California. It's the land of the earthquake. That's right. We hope our homes are there when we get back. But the young man playing this very unusual stringed instrument here. It consists of very, one very large string that's been hollowed out and has little string capos on it. It's called a flute. The world's greatest dog flutist from <laughs> Richmond, California, Matt Eckel. Next fella in line here has been with me longer than just about anybody. I think he's already broken the world's record for loyalty. Dogs are loyal. Yeah. He plays the rather large acoustic upright bass. He's been in the group for at least eight years. Doing a wonderful job. From Pacifica, California, James Kerwin. young man back here behind all this stuff and he plays it all and he does a wonderful job with fiddle mandolin percussion bongo drums shakers whatever mouth. plays his mouth <laughs> from winters california joe craven <laughs> the most recent addition to the group playing america's most popular instrument the Martin Herringbone flat top guitar from Davis, California, Rick Montgomery. We'd like to feature Rick playing guitar on a number that uh, I wrote with and recorded with Jerry Garcia. Another California boy. And this is a tune that sort of combines our two styles, the dog style and the dead style. Grateful dog.
Next time on Pickin' for Merle, Lori Lewis and Grant Street. Frosty Morn with Doc Watson. Let's take it together, son. And the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band. It's not that I'm not interested, you see. North Carolina is a great place to be. Provided by the KET Fund for Excellence. This program is a product of the partnership between the Kentucky Center for the Arts and KET, the Kentucky Network. Some Pine Special. This edition features the amazing saga of the Edlows, the a cappella quartet who arrived on Earth from the outer reaches of space many, many years ago. Noted musicologist and UFO expert, Professor Sylvester Appassionato, the world's leading authority on the Edlows, is on hand to help explain this strange and mysterious musical tale. that boy will last. How long before I'll have to step in and save him or what's left of him? And what's left of you and your family name? May I say this, sir? I consider this outright blackmail. Cheap, ambitious, and typical of you and everything you represent. Don't you try to pull that on me? What am I supposed to do? Redden with shame at the prospect of playing dirty pool with a fine and distinguished gentleman like you? It so happens I know your record from A to Z, Cass. I wouldn't touch it with a garbage man's gloves. Now let's get down to cases. I've got you chest tied to a ringer and you know it. All right, now I'm waiting. You'll reconsider the city's application for the housing loan. Not good enough. We'll drop the loan. Again. Now you're talking. This, this picture. Want the negative and that resigned. They'll be returned the day the loan comes through. Very well. May I use your phone? Why not? It's a taxpayer, that's your privilege. Uh, local call, old answer. Get me on this force. Norman Cass! You may consider this a victory, but I can tell you, it's one you'll live to regret. One more regret at my age won't make much difference. Amos? That candidate of yours, give him a tuck. Count me in. I'll back him to whatever extent is necessary. You have an open check. One, two, three hundred thousand, four hundred thousand. Cost is no object. Right. Good day, sir. Or more accurately, goodbye. Here in the chair. That's it. Now you just sit there.